Welcome to another episode of Synergy XR Talks, uh, our little podcast series of how companies in the real world actually apply business value to, to extended reality and how they use it. Uh, with me today, I have uh, Eric from PGS. And thank you very much for joining us today, P uh, Eric. It's, it's a pleasure having you here. And uh, you're, you're dialing in from Norway. So what's, what's the weather situation there right now? Well, um, if, you, uh, if I told it was cold, you would believe me, I'm sure. It's uh, down to 15 minus again today and slippery as, uh, as it can be. So uh, we're just uh, focusing on uh, staying on our feet these days. <laughs> here we go. Uh, yeah, stay safe and, and stay clear of, of problems. That, that so man. today we're going we're gonna to have a little conversation about, of course, obviously your company and, and what you do and how you're using the technology that, that we're proud to, to provide you with. However, uh, I want to start uh, at, a different, uh, at a different step. So the other day, a little company called Apple, they, they launched their new long anticipated and long waited device. And uh, I want to hear your thoughts on, on, on the device and, and what, what's your take on it? Uh, it's a device, I've been, I've been very um, curious on, on how it's going to look, what, is, what it can do. Uh, I obviously, I haven't tried one yet, but uh, it looks very promising. But um, I would actually I would need to read up a little bit more to see what it can do. But what I understand, it's, uh, it's very focused on, on mixed reality. Uh, and it, it works very well in, in that blended and mixed environments. So yeah. hopefully I'll be able to build a business case so I can get a couple of uh, devices myself, test, uh, test that here at PGS. <laughs> yeah, we, we can definitely help you with that, I'm, I'm sure. So yeah. I'm, I'm really enjoying all these reviews that are currently circulating <laughs> on, on, on different media. And I mean, just two weeks ago, if I had seen anyone with a, say, Quest 3 in the road, going down the road with a Quest 3, I would have thought, what's wrong with this dude? Um, then Apple launches and everybody is wearing their Apple Vision Pro in public and walking down the street and suddenly suddenly VR became cool yeah. for some strange reason. The Apple effect, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, Apple, you can say a lot about Apple, but uh, when they do things, they, they normally have a very solid product, right? So uh, it'll Absolutely. catch attention from, from, uh, from everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's it's to me, it's as as CSO and Synergy XR. I'm looking at Apple finally entering this market, and and it gives me hope for for what 2024 and beyond is going to look like. Because suddenly, extended reality XR, it's not just a very niche thing. It's probably, it, I I would say, it's actually became mainstream overnight. Later. So thank you, Apple, for, for that. Uh, we're going to piggyback on that as, as much as we can from our end. Uh, and again, I can uh, I can proudly present that we support Apple Vision Pro on, on our platform from day one. We've actually been working with with you and your team to, to create the, the tr some one of the trainings that we did for you to actually run on the uh, the Apple Vision Pro. And I'm sure we can uh, we can share some footage of that uh, real soon. Definitely. I think it's already uh, circulating somewhere on, on the internet, but uh, it's very promising. I really like how how we're not only or, or either or, either a virtual reality environment or augmented reality environment, but uh, with the crown, you, you completely switch between immersive or fully immersive experiences. So, so it is really blurring the lines between, between yeah. augmented and virtual reality. And now we're talking really mixed reality. Yes, you can actually fade reality away, right? Everybody has wanted to switch for that every now and then. But uh, yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm uh, I'm really eager to to try that. And uh, and uh, as I understand, you don't need to use a controller either. So it gets more organic, right? How you interact with things. And uh, I think I think it would be a very good product for us to test uh, in in yeah. in PGS as well. Yeah, absolutely. Let Let's make that happen real soon. And and let's make uh, you uh, get away with uh, with ordering a few headsets for, for you and your team. <laughs> so Eric, um, give us a quick introduction to who are you and what took you to where you are and what company you, you work with today. So just the, the high level journey here. All right, uh, me, I'm an engineer, robotics engineer. Never worked a day in my life with uh, robotics actually, but it, uh, it got me interested in technology. So I started in the um, seismic industry, offshore seismic industry in 98 with a company okay. called Fugro Geoteam. Uh, basically doing the same thing as PGS, my current employers, is, is doing uh, at the time. Uh, um, 
which is just basically search for hydrocarbons or mapping the subsea um uh the the the, wall, the, the, uh, the bottom, bottom of the sea basically down to uh, a okay. few kilometers down looking for hydrocarbons or other interesting stuff selling the okay. data to um, oil companies okay that that sounds super simple and yet uh, i'm <laughs> sure it's rather complex yeah it's so a, uh, big and, and was that again sorry oh it's a very big operation right it's massive ships with these listening cables air sources that pop off signal down into the seabed being reflected so it's a lot of data it's easy to to explain the principle but it's very hard to execute yeah yeah so, so your clients it's oil and gas companies that are looking for places to explore uh whether uh there is something to that there's something to to actually extract from the ocean floor i know you also have a a, a another customer segment that are using your data to kind of figure out would this be the right place to to place a wind turbine uh or should we figure out somewhere else to to put it is that correct yeah we're um kind of pivoting a little bit now and trying to get into that yeah. market as well uh it's um supposed to be booming uh within the next few years and we already see the beginning of that right that has uh we use the same principle, but it's uh, it's um, a higher um, resolution, so to say, uh, because they want to place the wind turbines uh, within the first 40 to 50 meters of the seabed and not kilometers down. But they need to know what's in the way so they can uh, get secure fundamentals for them. So uh, so that that's the new uh, new business line that we're moving into. All right. Cool. So, so okay. So, so take us on a trip with one of your ships and, and how you actually do it, because I remember long time ago when we started having this conversation i was mm, that that sounds super simple uh, but in reality it's completely different so, so how do you actually measure the the ocean floor well um it's a a lot of components that has to work together at the same time that's the first challenge right it's very easy for some uh, some small component to fail and uh, putting us on downtime so that's that's one part of the story so we have a crew on board of uh, Typically 50 persons. Uh, our ships are specialized. Um, the yeah, they they don't they don't look like a regular ship for sure. No, they don't. They look more like uh, like an ironing uh, or so, uh, some sort of triangle, right? It's uh, yep. the newest class we have, the Titan class. They are 70 meters wide and 100 meters long. Uh, the reason for the width is to be able to deploy so, uh, a lot of these listening cables or streamers, as we call them, uh, yep. to get them out wide. We we tow um, typically, let's say, 16 of these cables up to 8 mm -hmm. to 10 kilometers each um, with the width of uh, up to 2 kilometers, actually. So it's uh, it's been classified as the uh, world's largest moving man-made object or something. Wow. Like that. So it's, it's, uh, it's quite an operation. So, uh, yeah, so, so, so for those who are listening in or, or watching, Imagine a fishing boat with a lot of fishing rods. And uh, how many did you say? Like 70, 80 That's rods? 16 to, to 18. 16 to 18. Yeah. Okay. With with a lot of fishing wire going into the ocean to, and, and then you control the, the height of, of, of where the, the wires are. So, so you can make the, the right measurements of the ocean floor, right? Yeah, it, it's a, it's um you want to achieve a certain geometry, right? That's uh, that we agree on uh, with with our clients. Yeah, so the the uh, the width of the of the spread, as we call it, is uh, is um, done by uh, what we call doors, paravanes. Has a lot of names. It's basically like a, a wing, um, a float with a few wings on it that that can pull it wide like a spoiler. Uh, okay. Then you have ropes that, um, that that decide the distance between them. Typically, yep. well, let's say. Few hundred meters, maybe in between each cable, and the yeah. depth is uh, also computer controlled with these devices called eBirds, uh, which is an inline unit that is on the uh, the listening cable itself with wings that you computer yeah. control. So you can steer them laterally and horizontally. Okay, so so returning back to the the picture of the fishing boat, the cables they are slightly bigger than 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 the the fishing line you typically uh, use for for catching a fish. How, how thick are those lines just for comparison? Uh, I should know that by heart, but let's say uh, diameter um, 80, 90 uh, millimeters thereabouts. It's like, uh, you know, so, so like, like this. an arm. 
Yeah, like an arm, a uh, relatively thin arm dog with uh, an arm. Yeah, okay. The, so it's it's not difficult to imagine that you have 16 to 18 of these. They go out more than, than 8, 10 kilometers. Uh, they weigh a lot. It's so, so I'm, I'm slowly coming to my point, which is it's dangerous to work with this equipment. I mean, you, you need to know how to operate it without being injured. So that's take that's... us through how you did training on this before, and then we can walk into what you do today. But, but how did normal training go earlier? Yeah. It's uh, it's very typical on the job training, right? You have experienced personnel um, that will take you through it. And you have, um, you go out as a trainee or, or um, yeah. someone that's new to the job. Uh, the back deck, uh, the rear of the boat with, uh, with all the cables coming out, of course, there's a lot of potential energy there, right? Because you have all that tension, you have a few tons at least per cable uh, of, of uh, potential energy. So if something breaks or collapses, uh, it, it's going to be real dangerous, right? So you need yeah. to know where you can go, where you can't go. Um, yeah. And uh, that is not any knowledge that you're born with, right? So you have to be uh, explained by, by someone uh, experienced. So, so, so there's some behavior you need to teach. Where do I go safely? Where do I not go safely? Where do, and what yeah. what protective gear do I need to put on and, and yeah, so yeah. forth? Yeah, and we also and, have the color coded helmet. I think we still do that. If you're a trainee, you have a certain color of your helmet, so you can identify okay. who is who is new on the job, and we yeah. have to kind of look after uh, a bit bit closer. Um, yeah. Of course, what I what I missed that to to actually be able to go offshore in the first place. Uh, you need to have a helicopter underwater evacuation training. You need to have first aid training, and you need to have offshore survival training to be on board. Yeah. Uh, so, so everybody is, is trained in. It's it's a very good place if you want to have a health problem. It's probably one of the best places in the world outside of a hospital <laughs> to have some sort of issue. Everybody is well trained in in first aid and and survival. So, okay, mm. yeah, that, that's that's good to know. Investment to get somebody offshore. Yeah, I, that that was my point exactly. So, so before you actually start the the training on the equipment and how to navigate the back deck without being injured, there's a lot of things you need to go through in terms of understanding safety and and being offshore and all that. Yeah. And I'm sure you you need to kind of take some of these certifications. I don't know yearly or or more often. I think they are uh, every fourth year now. Uh, or yeah second year for some of them uh so so you do it relatively frequent yeah, and it's not it costs a, uh, quite a lot of money to do the course itself and then of course you have to take uh, a week out of work to to be able yeah. to, or to to do it properly so yeah and then of course the cost of putting people on a helicopter flying out to 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 the to the ship somewhere offshore yeah, yeah. and then start doing the training yeah. So, okay, sounds expensive. It sounds something that requires a lot of resources and human downtime, which is uh, also something we look into. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, so part of the, um, uh, the just complete that thought, it, it's, it's a part of the business, right? So the crew that has to yeah. be there, of course, will we'll, uh, we'll, um, take the expense we need to get them out there to do the job safely. But yeah. all the other ones in between that would like to go and visit a boat, but you're not going to invest, um, well, Ten to twenty thousand dollars in training and plus a helicopter ride and all that just to to have this nice to have visit. That that's where this comes in, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So I know you also have uh, you you were really early in in terms of understanding how technology could could contribute to to this process. And I know you have a very expensive simulator. Is it in Oslo or is it in Stavanger? I no, forgot. It's, Which... uh, outside of Oslo, it's uh, probably yeah. 40 kilometers south uh, to the south uh, east, southwest, sorry, of Oslo. Uh, yeah. So, um, that, that, yeah, that, that's a very good uh, good setup. Okay. So, so what is that setup exactly? That's that's like a physical copy of a back deck, or or how uh, does that? It, it, uh, the, the main things is you have two um, vessel bridges or boat bridges full-size uh, bridges with 360 projection uh, screens. So you can actually train. We use that to train our captains and the bridge, bridge officers yeah. on the various okay. operations we do uh, with those boats. And yeah. the, um, the uh, particulars of the boat is also in the simulator, so you know how it will behave. You can train a lot of tricky maneuvers. Uh, yeah. What you can also do, uh, or they are connected together, those two simulators. So you'll train with the support boat and uh, the main motor, motor vessel, as we call it. Support yeah. boat is refueling us. Um, 
it's mm. uh, it's uh, transporting uh, spare parts, all sorts of stuff. Um, so they need to 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 work together in a, in a very good way before we can actually do the operations offshore. Uh, there's yeah. also an engine room. Um, so you can have a full crew there, right? You train uh, crisis management with the crew as realistic as we can can get it. Um, All right. The back deck, as you say, we have a, a back deck simulator as well. Uh, it's aging uh, somewhat. We use some Xbox controllers and screens to, to be able to mm. to uh, to um, operate on the seismic equipment and train yep. for for various various um, incidents that can happen. That's also very powerful, right? You, you get some sort of this muscle memory of what what's going on. What what can you do? What what can't you do? Right? Yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Don't get me started on muscle memory. I'll, I can speak forever about that topic. Yeah. Okay. That That's okay. So, so it's a, a real, really technological advanced setup that you have and, and you were early movers with this. So when did you start considering using virtual reality and what, what made you come to, to that? Uh, yeah. To, to, to actually starting to, to, to do something about that, that yeah. want and that need. Well, in, in, um, I um I was part of a group called Special Project. I've been moving through the organization uh, through the years, and then um, uh, it was a newly founded group in the early months of the pandemic. Actually, I think it was in the middle of 2020. Called Special Projects, working in the operations group, and we were supposed to be the leading edge, looking into new technology, uh, improvement projects, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, that's a really exciting place to be. Um, and we wanted to make meetings more immersive, basically, during the COVID when everybody was working from home. You get this video yep. fatigue. Uh, we're just basically trying to spice it up a little bit. So we looked into various apps, um, uh, you know, augmented reality, uh, seeing if, if we can do some VR meetings, maybe. And that's mm -hmm. when we went down the path. And, and personally, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I think uh, I'm a gamer, so. Uh, uh, well, gamer, it's probably a very hard uh, uh, word. Um, I have a flight simulator set up in my basement with <laughs> VR goggles, you know, so it was very yeah. natural for me to, to see if we can do something with that as well. And yeah. uh, then we got in touch with with, uh, with you guys, basically. Yeah. We started that journey. That That's typically how every conversation we have with clients begin. There's one person who has a flight simulator somewhere or <laughs> or has a little interest in, in gaming or virtual <laughs> reality or whatever. And that's you, typically the person who drives a lot of this, uh, this, this new adoption of technology within companies. So thank you for being that person, by uh, the way. Yeah, well, you know, yeah. I, have a, I have a family, so there's no long flights to, uh, to the US uh, in the real time in the basement anymore. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. leave it with that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so so that this is this is super interesting. So obviously, we 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 went together. We we identified some use cases, and we we built some trainings for you. Yeah. So perhaps let's let's try to describe one of the trainings. And and again, going back to the the fishing boat with a lot of wires going into the water. Very uh, We were talking about how how you have equipment that controls where in the water the the cables are and the height. Uh, one thing you referred to was the eBird, and the the switching of that. That's a very standard operation procedure that you need to be able to do by heart because you are at a dangerous environment, yeah. and you need to 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 do it without messing up, to 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 speak frankly. Yeah, yeah. So so take us through the process of of changing an eBird and how we did that, or how you did that in 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 virtual reality, and how you train that. Well, the process there is that we, we try to find um, uh, a use case that that we could um, could develop and, and show to, to to management peers and, and, and see uh, see if we could could um, find a good problem to solve with VR because uh, it had a lot of potential. Um, yeah. So um, how the process is done uh, in practice is that you have these listening cables they're being towed overhead uh, for safety. So, um, you. you you basically you have to lower that down to the working height on the back deck, and then you yeah. clamp it off before you disconnect it because you you put these e birds as we call them uh, birds because they basically have wings. That's how you do the depth control. You have to yeah. clamp off the uh, the listening cable so it doesn't fall off the back of the boat, of course. And then you follow a specific procedure to insert the body of that e bird uh, using 
electronic spray, you, you use, use gaskets or rings, um, you attach it in a specific order, then you power it up and test it. Uh, very, very simple. You release the clamp and then you yeah. can put it back in the water. And there's plenty of those devices on our cables, right? So this is not something we do every every now and then. It does constantly, right? Yeah. So, so before, oh, I mean, so what is the cost of, of one of these devices? And, and if you make a mistake, I, I'm sure there's a, a pretty a heavy financial uh, consequence. I'm sure I'm going to be arrested immediately by some of the uh, experts if I give you a, a specific. Yeah, let's not. I'm going let's, to get it wrong, but uh, let's say let's um, ten to fifteen thousand uh, dollars at least. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's relatively expensive, and we have very many of them, right? Yeah. So obviously, there's there's two elements here of 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 thinking training in a different way of obviously having people to get a better understanding of what they're doing, but also to reduce the amount of very costly ever errors. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you done any, any before and after calculations on introduction of, of VR technology on the, on the back deck? No, we're actually not that far down the, the, the road yet. We're still, um, we're still, um, kind of debugging the procedure. Yeah. I think we're just reach the sort of final first candidate of it. So we're basically demonstrating, testing it now. Uh, we have yeah. um, had a company event now this week, actually, where uh, we had a lot of the offshore uh, crew coming into the office to talk to us and, uh, and us to talk to them. And then we had a stand, my group had a stand, so we could demonstrate that. And they, they were very positive. Now it looks it looks good. Um, yeah. As I said with, with the VR and, and the, the virtual backpack, eBird training, all that, you won't replace all the training. I think that's uh, that that's not going to happen. But you can get a head start. You can maybe get seventy percent of the way. Uh, you can you can uh, get used to the um, to to, um, to to the environment, right? You get a head start when you get on board to start your real training. So uh, yeah. So I think it has a, a lot of a lot of meaning on the on the first part of your journey, basically. Yeah, absolutely, and I completely agree that that we're not talking about a complete replacement. We're going to talk about a supplement to existing ways of doing business. And, yeah. and again, 60, 70, 80% training can be transferred into something technology, sure. and the rest, uh, 30, 20% will be still hands-on because there are so many fine motoric elements that you need to, to teach, actually, yeah. by doing hands-on training. But you get a good uh, good start. You you, you get um, involved with the procedure. You know the steps, right? You, you you're not going to do them exactly the same way as you do in real life. But you you'll know what to expect, what to do, right? And um, there's a, it's not not a secret that it's very expensive to take these guys out of work and fly them around mm-hmm. the globe to to different training centers as well. So you can yeah. buy a lot of VR masks for for a price of one person on one one course. So, uh, yeah. so that, that that's the, the the beauty of this. It scales so so well, right? It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to take us part of the way, and then it'll exactly. pay for itself, you know. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's very nice to hear. Right. So, so up until now, the the biggest uh, the the biggest uh, benefit is that the the reduction of travel and and human downtime and all that and we'll see about how we can uh, how we can Im- impact the business side of business with uh, lowering the amount of, of very costly errors and so forth let's let's have that conversation in a year from now and, and see where where we are on that definitely uh, so so this is i and i and this is why i love talking to to people like you that that this is one very specific use case of of the use of extended reality I want to expand a little bit on 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 some of the other uh, things. Uh, like you said, you you just used the technology for a for an exhibition, and you were demonstrating some things. Sure. I see a lot of different use cases, and a lot of companies will be using a lot of different use cases over the next years. Where do you see the technology move uh, within PGS and and your company? Uh- you know, we started with with creating the virtual back deck, right? To to get a, a, a digital copy or virtual copy of the back deck environment uh, of a Titan class vessel, which it's impressive enough in itself, right? Seventy meter wide work area uh, and it's out at sea, um, and not many people in the world has actually seen that. Uh, yep. 
uh, just pictures, right? So uh, it had a tremendous value to to show people what it actually looks like, the scale of it. You know, people purchasing parts. They were just wow, I didn't know it was that big. And then you have um, have clients that uh, that that can uh, can uh, have a demonstration that will never go offshore um, in in um, in normal uh, in a normal situation. They will just be yeah. office people. Now they can get that be, get a sense of the scale and what they're actually paying for, right? And that, uh, I mean, uh, whenever I've had a client on board one of the boats on the visit, they will say, "Wow, no, no wonder it's so expensive." Look at the size of all yeah. this, you know, and the, and the price tag of all the equipment. So yeah. um, that that is I mean, uh, probably the uh, the most impactful thing we've had yeah. so far, basically. And 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 that's to to me that is the true power of of a fully immersive experience yeah. because I, you couldn't and and i i know we talked about this a year ago and and i saw pictures of your ships and i i even i saw powerpoints and 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 also a video and and still yeah it's it doesn't resonate until you either one is on the physical back deck yeah. or two you put on a, a fully immersive experience yeah. and you look around and understand the volume and the magnitude of, yeah. of what you're doing that is the true power of virtual reality to me definitely and and once you have that right there's so much so much you can do so so in my my plans for the for the let's say medium term future would be things like um, incident reconstructions because sometimes things go wrong right and Yep. What can be more powerful than having, let's say, your client or your stakeholders in the same virtual room with you, where you can actually point and animate, saying, "This thing fell down here, and this is what yep. happened." Or safety zones, go zones, no go zones, and say, "Okay, in this area you can't be," and I'll show you why. You know, and then you can simulate some some sort of failure. Uh, yeah, you can also um, you can also have um, have um, hazard hunts um, just making sure something is out of order somewhere on the back deck and having relatively new or well experienced people as well to go and explore mm -hmm. find out what's wrong yeah. report it back yeah. you know that that's a good familiarization uh training as well yeah uh, and, um, so a lot of potential use cases lining up in the future and exactly. that's another part of yeah go ahead no, no i was just going to say that this um uh, whenever we had this this uh this um showed this this back deck uh everybody has been uh, super impressed right but of course you get that inevitable okay what can i do with it and then of course yeah. where the training modules come in right and when we can actually start to use it because it has a lot of value in it on its own just to show what it looks like you know yeah but, uh, we we shouldn't stop there absolutely no absolutely no and and that's this is one of the things that we see with a lot of companies that we talk to who have been like first movers and trailblazers in exploring this new technology, they 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 create a, one use case, and then other parts of the organization they see this and oh, we can see value here. Like like marketing will come and say, "Wow, that looks great. Mm -hmm. We can use this." Oh yeah. When we talk about business partners and and new potential customers, no. Yeah. But how do you get from a bespoke uh, custom? build a VR project to something that is accessible to, to everyone else. I think this is where our platform uh, really comes to, to its true uh, force because it's super easy to actually for, for marketing to, to reuse some of the assets that you have, have built for, for your trainings and, and that, that could go both ways. So, so there are so many use cases to be explored here that, that I can't wait to, to see what the future brings. And, no. and that includes all the use cases with mixed reality from the uh, from the Apple Vision Pro. Mm -hmm. I mean that that's going to be fun to to watch what what's going to emerge on the back of that. So yeah, um, definitely, it's it's exciting times for sure. And and the, the best thing about the VR technology is the scalability, right? Because I mean, the, uh, it costs some money to develop it, right? But once you have it, uh, uh, the only only. A marginal cost is uh, is uh, a few extra goggles, right? And they're they're not for free, but I mean you you can get two to three masks for the price of a new iPhone, right? So if you frame it uh, yeah. like that, then then uh, it, it's uh, it makes more sense. Absolutely, the, yeah, and I really like that point. Uh, it it makes a it it makes a lot of sense uh, actually. No. So. Um, is is there anything else you think we should touch upon? Anything that didn't ask you yet. Uh, 
What? Um, uh, so I want to know a little bit about how, what what's the reaction. So so far so far you're on the on the learning curve, and people are being introduced to this new tool. Have you had any like immediate reactions to to what it looks like, and and what does people say when they take on the mask the first time? I think fifty percent of uh, everybody uh, everybody's cursed word is wow. You know, that's uh, because uh, some people have been exposed to VR before. So they know what to expect. They're still impressed, yeah. right? The people that haven't tried it, they're really, really impressed, you know, that you can actually yeah. see people that have been on board for decades, right? And then you get the mask and say, wow, it's just like, just like, uh, oh, they said yeah, more, it's more tidy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. No, VR thought, is much more tidy than the real world. Yeah, we yes. were very lucky, actually. Uh, if I can share a little story, well, because I was demonstrating the the back deck environment to a small group in a meeting room uh, in the PGS um, head office, basically. Yeah, uh, we were just walking around uh, virtually, and then my manager at the time he knew that and he wanted uh, to have a go. And he said, "Well, I have to call my manager." And uh, that's the executive vice president. He came and said, "Wow, this is really impressive." There's a board meeting. Yeah. They let me call those guys up. Then the whole board, <laughs> EGS and uh, and the uh, CEO came down and had a go as well. And uh, oh, nice! So that that uh, probably gave us a lot of traction for the project because my manager said after that that you know what I don't think I could have stopped that project now even if I wanted to. So uh, <laughs> you know, that was uh, that was really uh, really lucky, you know. But, uh, uh, it, it sells itself, right? So um, uh, the the immediate plans uh, forward now is to for me to make. Uh, or my group actually to, to make some some kits laminated instructions really easy and some goggles put them in a in a box and yeah hand them out to the organization so they can bring them with them to client meetings and stuff like that to be able to to show off a little bit yeah i mean i i'm often asked what what what's the biggest obstacle for for us to 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 really expand and my my response is usually human adoption and how to address that is to put people in actually put put headsets on people that's when you really understand the the true power of of this technology and and how it immediately takes you from a boring meeting room to the exciting back deck of of one of your vessels yeah. where you truly understand that the magnitude and volume of of what you do and I so, mean, w one more thing that that I don't think we touched upon is the multi-user thing as well, right? So we can, mm -hmm. uh, with 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 your platform, I mean, I I can put on masks here in the office, and uh, offshore someone can put on a VR mask, and we can meet on the same virtual back deck, and uh, yeah. the, the 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 crew on board can uh, can explain the challenges, they can point that stuff happening on the back deck. Well, not not live, of course, but you can. Uh, you can share. Um, uh, you can have a common um, common understanding of what's going on. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, we used that when we designed it um, as well, and that was really an eye opening for for me as well. When um, one of your designers put VR on, and we did that, and then they shared construction drawings. We were actually drawing on this one needs to be two meters in that direction. Just drew an arrow on the deck, right? And uh, yeah. collaborative design. Yeah. That was uh, truly amazing, you know. Yeah, that, and I mean, I, I tend to forget some of the the things that that really makes people uh, people say wow, and and yeah, that you can meet in the same room across different geographical location. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's a huge advantage these days, and and again, it travels a lot of traveling. Yeah. It, it saves a lot of travel costs, and uh, yeah. So I'm glad you reminded me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I mean, it 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 um, it doesn't solve. Uh, all our problems, right? Or all our challenges. No, no. If you use it in the right way. It's it's a very perfect, uh, a very powerful uh, tool. Yeah, perfect. So I'm sure we have a ton of of visuals to share in the notes of of this episode with with some of the the videos that we did, both using Apple Vision Pro, but also uh, some of the, the 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 very impressive views you get from your back deck, so that people really understand that it's it's not something you see every day. So nope. I think we covered a lot, and I just want to again say thank you very much for for joining us on on this call and and share your experience with with extended reality and and how we work with with a company like you. And thanks for sharing your story. Uh, anything you want to conclude with, then now is your time, and uh, you can say whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. It's gonna be. Tough, no? <laughs>
Oh, I'm just joking. It's uh, it's been uh, fantastic. It's been an honor to 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 be a guest here, and uh, and uh, I must just say that uh, that you and you, in your team in Synergy XR, it's been uh, it's very responsive, very very uh, very good guys to work with, right? So uh, so whenever there's been a delay, it's been never been on on uh, your side to put it that way, because uh, we have a lot of other things on our plate here in in EGS yeah. as well. So uh, the Synergy XR, good great partner to work with yeah thank you very much for saying that and again i can't i can't stress enough that that this is new technology and working with people like you and and your team and having your feedback to our product that that's really been instrumental in taking us to where we are today with a very tangible product that really delivers business value across a, a lot of different industries and and thank you very much for being part of that so i think uh Let's conclude it on this high note. And uh, I can't uh, wait to, to actually build more exciting stuff with you. And uh, thank you very much for joining us today, uh, Eric from PGS. And uh, to everybody watching, thank you very much for joining us again and uh, taking part of this Synergy XR Talks. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.